welcome back everybody thanks for stopping back by as you saw on the thumbnail it's just another boring haul look what I bought video this was pretty interesting though <clears throat> and there's something in this one that I didn't mention in the video of me going to the antique stores um, I found something else at Goodwill while I was in North Carolina and I didn't video that so I just figured I'd, I'd cover it when I did this video but First of all, hey, first of all, before I get to first of all, if you have not already subscribed, would you please subscribe? And if you would hit the, hit the like button, helps tremendously to grow my channel. So far, I'm over 6,000 subscribers as of this video. And I've got nothing but gratitude for you guys that have helped me get there so far. Um, it's amazing that I've even got that far. I remember starting my channel and it was very, very tough to get to 50 subscribers. Um, and uh, once I got, it, it seems like you get no traction, you get no traction, you get no traction, your wheels keep spinning. And you guys who are just are just starting out, you feel like you aren't getting any traction, just hold on. Um, it, it will come in time. And, and then it seems like it exponentially gets faster. So I'm off on a rabbit trail already, sorry. But anyway, thank you for getting me to 6,000 subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, already, uh, are also rather um, our Facebook group we had our Facebook group built off and wow was that fun um, it was let me tell you what there was a lot of work involved building that video with all those snapshots and slides and it was fun it was great the winner I sent the winner a personalized coffee mug with the picture of his car and it said model car videos Facebook group winner and the picture of his car and, and, and so there's a mug and he got a t-shirt as well. So um, that a lot of you guys were asking, what did, what did the winner get? That's what he got. He got a t-shirt with his car, personalized winner. Um, and yeah, it's, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, anyway, if I think about it, I'll put a snapshot of that um, mug and uh, right here. And maybe the uh, snapshot of the t-shirt right here. So that's what we'll do. Anyway, hey guys, also go to my Teespring store. Here's a sticker. Order one of these stickers if you want a sticker. There's another um, sticker with the 55 Chevy. Um, uh, maybe you want a t-shirt. It's getting a little chilly outside. Maybe you need a hoodie or a long sleeve shirt or I'm just joking with you guys, but do go over to my Teespring store, link in the description and check that out. And don't forget also to go to Hobby Nut Models and uh, look at Mark's inventory there. And he's also carrying a lot more MCW paints. So you might want to go check that out. All right, let's get started. So antique haul, antique um, shopping treasure hunt. Uh, um, it's like a gold mine to me. It's like going to those, uh, when you go into the mountains and you see those gym mining and you shake the, and you, you think, oh man, there's going to be a huge, big ball of uh, gold in there. That's the way I feel when I go to these antique stores. And it, it drives my wife nuts because she's like, it's no fun going antiquing with you anymore because all you want to look for is model kits. Oh, man. But it is like addicting and I just scan everything. And, and these are the kind of things you find. So this is a 37 uh, Chevy, 37 Ford panel delivery. I got this one for $20 at an antique store. It's never been cracked open. This thing is in absolutely perfect condition. Absolutely perfect condition. Not a hint of water damage, not a hint of anything. Man, this thing's so cool. I had not really seen this um, this kit before, so when I, I saw it was somewhat unique to me at least, I figured, wow, I'll get that for sure. And I got a little bit of age on it. It's 1997, so it's got a little bit of age, but this will be a nice one to put up on the shelf um, and admire. Probably will never crack her open or anything like that, but this was one of the... Uh, one of the nuggets that I found. This isn't the, um, this was just a gold flake. This isn't a nugget. This is a gold flake. I've got the nugget. It's coming up. So don't go anywhere. But this was a gold flake. You know, when you go gold mining, you get the little flakes. I think they must pepper the, the, that stuff in there. Cause it seems like you always find, um, something, something, some gold, you know, but anyway, all right, off topic. Sorry. This is a gold flake, but it's still a cool kit. And uh, tell me, have you guys built this one? Um, is it very rare? I haven't even looked it up to see if it is or not. But anyway, all right. Next on the next on the list here, found this one at 
a um, this was at the Whistle Stop Antique Mall. I forget what the thir the thirty seven. I got that in Dillard, Georgia, at an antique mall. This one came from um, Franklin, North Carolina, at the Whistle Stop Antique Mall for nine dollars and ninety nine cents. I found this one in a toy room. Um, no, I was not embarrassed to go in the toy room looking for man toys. But this is uh, if you want to call us a, if you want to say we play with toys, it's it's a man toy. Okay, whatever. This is the Neil Bonnet. 75 Valvoline stock car. Cool looking, isn't it? And this one was 10 bucks, 9.99, which is a great steal because you don't have to pay shipping or anything. But this is one of your 124 scale uh, monogram NASCAR that I hear so many people rave about how great they were. This thing's completely sealed. It's got a little stuff on the plastic, but not on the box. This one's got a, a copyright date of 1989. So this one definitely has some age to it. And it's a really cool kit. It was a great find. I did find several kits at that antique mall, but this is the only model kit that I bought. I found also a Jeff Burton, a Rev Revell monogram Jeff Burton kit, which I have two of them directly above this camera. Um, I didn't need that. And I know people are saying, you didn't need it. I don't need all these. I don't guess I want them, but anyway. I didn't get that one, and there were also a few others that were overpriced. I wouldn't pay what they were asking for them. But anyway, this is a cool kit here. Um, Valvoline, oh, Neil Bonnet. Neil Bonnet, um, as you probably most of you guys know, he, he was killed at, at Daytona in a, uh, I think that was when Hoosier, was it Hoosier was getting into the, uh, uh, it was Hoosier and Goodyear. We're having the the war and tires uh, in NASCAR, and and I think he was on Hoosiers, but I'm not saying that's bad for Hoosier, but it just he happened to have a blowout or something like that, and he passed away there in a wreck. But anyway, there it is, Neil Bonnet's Vaseline Pontiac stock car number 75. All right, and this next one's pretty cool, and I I got quite a few comments on that one. They're like, yeah, you got you did good on that one. So I got this back at the, uh, also in Dillard, Georgia. Dillard is as far north in Georgia as you can go. There's a restaurant there that a lot of people know. It's called the Dillard House. A lot of people go eat there. But this was a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, this was a antique, antique mall that's there um, beside the road. Um, found this one hiding, and I was like, wow, look at here. This thing's neat looking. Never saw that kit before. Um, it's got the uh, copyright date of 1981, which shocked me. I didn't think it was as old as it was. Um, they wanted thirty-five dollars for it. I'm like, oh, thirty-five bucks. That's got kind of getting, kind of getting a little high. In my personal opinion for a model it has a little bit of water damage here on the box, but I did look at some eBay prices, and I thought, well, thirty-five dollars may be actually a pretty good price. So I went ahead and got it. Then I got it to the cabin where we were staying, and and because it's open, it's an open box. I said, well, you know, I probably should have looked it over a little bit more. Once I opened it and it wasn't a glue bomb, I'm like, great, it's all here. And I got to looking, I got to looking, and I took out the contents, and I saw there was no chrome tree. And I was really bummed because, you know, all vehicles, all, all um, model kits have chrome trees. And I was like, stink. How am I going to get you know a chrome bumper for this thing and so i got to looking at the instructions and guess what it didn't have a chrome tree the bumper is in here and it's you have to paint it so there was no chrome tree and i was i was like yes because i thought i'd spent my 35 dollars in vain not that i even would build this thing but there is a uh yeah it tells you what color to paint the bumper so when i saw that i was like oh man here it is right here so bumper number 27 C that's silver so you have to paint it so there was only a few like shiny chrome parts on here like the windshield wipers they're just painted silver the trim is silver and the bumper is the same silver so I was saved I should have looked it over a little closer so when you do buy things like this at an antique market and they've been open you might want to go through and check the contents just to be sure because you never know what has been taken out or lost but luckily this thing is all was all sealed up in its package finally all the tires are there and everything else here's something cool not model car related but i did look at these i don't know if i included them in the antique video or not but if i did or if i didn't regardless there was a whole bunch of these hot rod magazines this one's from november 1962 
there was a stack, like a huge stack. They wanted $8 a piece, which I couldn't afford the whole thing, but I thought I need to get one, and I just randomly picked one, one of the older ones that I found. And looking through this thing, it is an absolute time capsule. Um, how, oh man, it, it's just like we take things for granted uh, today on the information that we have available to us. Um, but then again, if you see some of the prices of things they were asking, I'm going to flip to a page here in, in a second and you'll see what I'm talking about. It was right here. I remember because it has this. You want to subscribe to Hot Rod Magazine? I think this might be where you do it. All right, so right here. This is so cool. And you Chevy guys will probably really appreciate this. So dual quad jet, uh, dual, dual quadra jets maybe is what that means. I don't know. Two four barrels. It says sweep around port design, balance 180 degree firing order. And then we get down here to the, it's, this is an Elderbrock. <clears throat> I'll cover this up so you can't see it yet. Uh, only Elderbrock provides maximum quality and in, in ultimate and the ultimate in carburate car carb i can't even read my, i don't have my glasses on i'm having a hard time carburet carburation with the exclusive sweep around port and balance 180 blah 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 get on down it says for general use or racing manifold on instant demand model p22 category number 2140 $94.50 and the installation kit 2550 what would you pay for an intake like that these days some sort of state-of-the-art uh, drag racing dual four intake. Would you get it for $94? No, you would not. And that was probably like in 1962, $94 was probably more like about, you know, 600 bucks or something crazy. So I, I got to thumbing through this thing and, and there are so if you, okay, so I said it's not model car related, but when you get to looking at some of these, um, some of these, these cars, these drag cars and all, there are so many ideas that I see incorporated into guys that build these. Look at this. Look how he's, this guy's taking the altered, this is just a shell sitting on top of it. Um, I see these all the time now. Um, Luca was just at a a, um, a show over in California and he was looking at some of these and, and they were talking about how they took a such and such body and put on there and they couldn't find the body and so they made one, but wow, it, it's just, this thing is like in perfect condition. I don't guess the guy who ever bought these really read them, but look at this, man. This is so much fun to just go through and look at, but so many great ideas you can incorporate into the model car, um, model car world. Uh, what I was hoping though, as I was flipping through, um, I was hoping that I would come across something on this, uh, what's his name? Ed or Big Eddie Roth, Big Eddie Roth, something like that. Anyway, I, I hear a lot about this Big Eddie or Big Big Daddy, I, whatever. But I was hoping that I would see something about him in here, but I still ha I don't see anything about Big Eddie Roth. So you guys, if you, RF, well, what, what is that? Uh, Roth Fink, I don't, I don't, I don't, anyway, whatever. But, um, I was hoping that this book would enlighten me on who Big Eddie Roth is, but I don't guess so. So I'll look even harder. But there was some. Uh, there was another cool thing I wanted to show you in here, if I can find it. And I know this is like, come on, Matthew, this is supposed to be model cars. Here it is. And it, and it has a lot to relate to that 37 that I was just looking at. So if you can see this, I'll say, I'll read it. it says sale. This is talking about this vehicle here. Sale 36. It doesn't have a price, so it's a bummer, but. 36 Ford V8 panel truck, mint condition, everything original, 10,790 actual miles. Drive anywhere would make an excellent service truck, attract real attention, make offer. It's over in, uh, looks like it's in Pennsylvania. Is there a Dallas, Pennsylvania? But anyway, what a cool magazine. I could go on and on, go through every page. And here's your uh, Iskadarian or Inski cams. There's an ad for that. How stinking cool is that? And if you want some Chesterfield cigarettes, you could be entered in the $181,000 sweepstakes. First prize is $46,000. Cool. Second prize, 21 1963 Falcon convertibles. 
and they're doing all this under the 181,000. So there's 21 of these, there's 46,000 of this. There's a bunch of stereos, there's a Fairchild sound movie camera, 20 RCA Victor color televisions and uh transistor radios. Wow, there's 2,020 of those. Things must have been a lot cheaper back then, don't you imagine? Anyway, all right, enough fun with that magazine. Moving on. All right, so again, I got Here's these two Renwall kits. Never seen them before. Ran into these at, where was that? Lithonia, Livonia, Livonia, Georgia, on our way home from the mountains. Ran across a, uh, a booth that had a lot of old stuff, a lot of old model kits, and I only left with these two. They were, everything was a little bit pricey, so these two were $20 a piece, so I got these two. Thought they were really cool. I'm not into the little small scale stuff, but when I saw these, I thought I had to have these. So first one here is this 48 scale 1950 Ford convertible. And you see it's got like a display case. Well, it's inside here. So it's got a display case included. But I got to looking at this little guy. Here's your instruction kit. It's actually, actually a really massive um, instruction that shows you all the other cars too. And this is out of, I think, 1965 is this release date. So this is this has a lot of age on it, but here's your 1950 Ford little convertible body. Got a little flash on it, but these things are really detailed when you get down and look at them for their size. Got the in, the interior; it's already basically put together except for the dashboard. Here's your little tree. It's got the front suspension, um, some leaf springs. Here's the rear differential. Here's your dash. There's the other leaf spring, and then the boot for the convertible top here's the chassis still attached to the tree is that cool let's see 1966 it's got a stamp on there okay so 1966 Renoir production or something incorporated chrome tree still all intact I think maybe a piece or two yeah there's the transmissions off of it detailed little grill bumpers little hubcaps little tiny hubcaps or wheels and one of them's off Here's the display case, and uh, here's the window glass. Everything's here. So I was like, wow, this is really cool. These haven't really been tampered with. The steering wheel did come off the tree. It is so tiny. But check out these tires. They're like O-rings. They look like O-rings, but they're treaded. They look more like a wheelbarrow tire, but they're treaded tires. Here's the, here's the bottom of the engine it does it is a curbside so all you have is the bottom portion of the engine and there's a little sticker here that you would have stuck on the display case it says 1940 1950 ford convertible i thought these were really really cool so i bought two of them i got the other the corvette also that i'm about to show you something really interested in the corvette really interesting in the corvette kit and I want to hurry because I don't want this video to be so long. But these are so cool. And they will be on the shelf as a nice little addition. And I will never um, build these because I'm a, col a collector at heart, I think, and a builder uh, secondary. The, the Corvette here is a 65 Corvette Stingray kit. Now, there's something interesting when I open this up. See if you notice. Um, okay, so there's not one but two sets of instructions there's two sets of instructions why well i guess because there's two kits in here so there's two 1965 corvette bodies and there's two chrome trees and two chassis and there's something missing though that the display case is not in here well this antique store had probably and, and if any of you guys will think it's worth the drive i uh, uh, I could give you the address to where I got these from. You could go get the rest of them. They all had two, they had probably five or six more of the Corvettes. They all had double. It was double everything. I don't know why, but it's all doubled. So two chrome trees, two chassis, everything. The, the little, look, check out the little steering wheels. Do you see that? How small? I mean, that is so tiny. But when I, I check the other boxes because I like I don't want to take you know one kit's empty just leaving an empty box and kind of almost like stealing but they all had they all had double there's two two windows two 
eight tires. They even have the little metal axles in there. How cool is that? But if you guys are, are interested in going to Lith Livonia and getting the rest of these, and there was also that 1967 edition of the Osmobile Toronado. I was calling it a Toronto in my video. I am so shocked that I didn't get blasted with comments saying, you're saying it wrong, dummy. It's a Toronado. But anyway, there was a 1967 or original release of the AMT Oldsmobile Toronado. And there were some uh, old big AMT truck kits that were original editions back either from the late 60s, maybe 70s or something like that. But anyway, I bought these. There's still a pile of these left, or there were the day I left from there. Um, this was the only Ford, but these were really, really cool. And I thought that they would make such an interesting uh conversation piece as if i really have people coming here looking and talking about my models but if i ever did i'd have some really interesting things to talk about all right so that's the next to the last thing and the last thing it was found at and this is not a model car so spoiler not a model car about to be shown and in the thumbnail you might have seen what it was but it's interesting to say the least so I went to Goodwill in Franklin, North Carolina, just on a whim. We were meeting my mom to go eat. We had a few minutes and I said, let me run to Goodwill real fast. You never know what you're going to find. And me and my daughter, we walked in, me and uh, Ruthie, and we were looking. Um, there was nothing. I was just looking at the board games. We were like, well, let's look at the board games real fast. And piled up there with the board games was this. And when I saw Ravel, I was just shocked. And then I saw it was the old style of Ravel and I was more shocked. And then... I saw it was a model and I was completely blown away and then I saw it was a ship and I was kind of like womp 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 but anyway it was still a model kit and it had six dollars and fifty cents on it and I'm like well it's probably just an empty box or it's got some leftover parts um, this kit is a 1957 flying cloud ship from Ravel the only thing wrong with the box is I think, and that might have happened on the way home, but it got a little split there. So there's the kit number. It's a H344-298. Um, anyway, when I saw it, I was so shocked. I didn't care if it was a boat. I didn't care if it was a rocket ship or anything. It was a model kit from 1957, and I opened it up, and guess what? It's all here. It's never been started. Every bit of it's here. The instructions on how to cut your, oh boy, I'd like to see somebody do that. But anyway, how to cut all your your wires for your, um, or your rigging or whatever you call it. I'm sure I'll be corrected on that, but it's okay. There they are, all the little wire rigging things. Here's the uh, instructions. It's like it's the size of a newspaper. I need to open it up really fast. I haven't opened it just to see what what it looks like. A lot of reading or the history of it oh wow look at that yeah you had to do a lot of reading on these I've noticed on some older models they would have instead of just like an arrow to show you where to point to put something you actually had to read it and so I'm sure like a lot of people were like nah I don't want that model uh, give me the one with the arrows um, and so here are the the uh, preformed sales little damage on one of them but here are the preformed sails that it has really really thin plastic all the all the stuff or the majority of it still bagged up here's the sides of the the ship um this bag is busted open but i would imagine that every single piece of this is is here just as it was supposed to be and then there is this and i thought well that kind of stinks they've already started it but they hadn't Look at this. It came with cement. And this was the neatest thing out of the entire model to me. Was the tube. It's, it's, it's been busted. No telling what it got on. But Ravel Type S cement. And it says right here where it's squished for styrene plastic. I thought, man, that is so cool. A tube of glue from 1957. I mean, it's no good, but had a few little few little stickers or something I'm not 100% sure if they're stickers or if they're not water slide decals well actually these are there's some water slide decals flying cloud and 
Look at this cute little lifeboat. How cute. And there was also a roll of string. And I don't know if I would imagine it probably did come with with it. Star Bobbin style, it says. American Thread Company. They're probably long out of business. It says Made in USA. You know they're out of business. Nobody makes anything in America anymore, do they? But anyway, guys, this was the neatest of all the cars or anything that I got. Because of its age and because it's preserved, it seems to be pretty solidly preserved to what was there when, when, when whoever bought it so many years ago. And I, I snagged it as fast as I could. Not like anybody was there trying to beat me to it. One thing about model model searching at an antique mall, and this nobody's nobody's going to be there to try and snatch it out of your hand. It's not like the old vase that all the uh, all the ladies are looking for that 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 you know they saw it on eBay and they remember seeing it. Nah, if there's a model kit at the antique, you probably got to dig for it. Sometimes they're like behind stuff. They're not they're not the key element of an antique store for by no means. Nor are they the key element of Goodwill. But you never know what you're going to find. So take advantage of your antique malls, antique shops, no matter how fancy. You never know what you're going to find. Goodwill, never know. Guys, I'm done with this. I am done with this. I um, had a lot of fun going and getting all of these kits. And I love to share them with you guys. Because you're like my model building family. And uh, without you guys, I, it would be no fun. But I do thank you for watching. I do thank you for subscribing to my channel. And there'll be another one. There'll be more models. I've got to get building. Um, been working on my uh, group build with the uh, uh, content creators. 1944 group build. I'm working on that. I'm recording, doing videos. But they're going to probably be at a... I'll release those a little later. But thank you so much for watching, and I'm out of here. Don't forget to uh, like, comment, subscribe. Do comment on all these, because I know that you guys know a lot more. There's people out there that know a lot more about this stuff, especially the Renwall kits, the Land Rover, um, Big Big Rothy. What was his name? Big. Anyway, the RF guy. You, you guys know a lot more about him than I do. So just... Uh, I appreciate all the comments. I'm done. Done talking, guys. Take care. See you later.